who's David. I will say your name before your answer for the benefit of our radio audience so that they know who's talking and can follow along. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to start with you. Uh, if you'd like to make a, your opening statement, feel free. Well, good evening. And uh, I'd like to start off by thanking all the organizers here for putting on this event and inviting me tonight. My name is Craig Chairman, and I'm running for the Cal County Board District 9. I'm currently uh, an IU student graduating very soon with a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Public Administration. I was in the Army for 11 years as a combat medic, and I served with uh, the 82nd and 25th Infantry Division and deployed three times. Uh, after getting out there, I came back to the area, and I had a beautiful baby daughter named Aubrey, who is currently nine months. I am looking to run for county board because I want to give my daughter the same chances and opportunities I had growing up. I've had some, some concerns recently with how the county is running, uh, especially with the uh, fiscal responsibility that's going on. The Kelp County is one of the highest tax counties for property tax outside of Cook County and all surrounding Colorado counties. It's time to start looking through and reviewing the board and looking at the budget and the administrative apparatus to see where the actual money is really going. Until we have that down, we will not be able to fix the problem with spending $900,000 and then the proposed budget for 2015 is $800,000 out of the reserves. It's irresponsible. We need to put it into it now. I know tonight that most of you will probably, well, some of you may not agree with everything I have to say, but you will know where I stand and you know that I'm honest and transparent. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, now, uh, Jim Lipke, Democrat, uh, if you'd like to give your opening statement, sir. Thank you. My name is Jim Lipke. I'm a Democrat candidate for the California Board of District 9 to ask for your vote on November 4th. After serving six years in the U.S. Navy, I earned my associate's degree from Highland Community College out in Freeport, my bachelor's degree from NIU. 2009-2013, I served as the Cal Township trustee. I raised my daughter in DeKalb County, and for the last nearly 20 years, I've lived in the 9th District, and this last December, I purchased my first home in this district. Out walking this summer here, I've found many, many people, the majority I talk to, regardless of their party preference. They simply want their government to work. They want to live the most for their tax dollars. Whether they're concerned about the county sheriff's office, the court system, the health department, the highway department, the Veterans Assistance Commission, Forest Preserve District, through the nursing home, they clearly saw their tax dollars allowed the county to provide vital service to the people of District 9. Without these services, our county would be less attractive to the businesses that could bring good paying jobs to this district. I pledge to work hard on the county board, hammer out the compromises that will make our government work. That's why I'm running as Democrat candidate for County Board District 9, to make sure our government works to serve all the people of the county. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jim Lipke. I'd like to stay with you if we could, Jim, for this first question. You'll have two minutes to answer, and then uh, Mr. Jim, you'll have your two minutes to answer. Uh, but uh, Mr. Lipke, first with you, uh, what makes you the best candidate for this office? To be a good candidate, it's a lot of work. You gotta be out, you gotta be knocking doors, you gotta be talking to people. That's the only way to really do this right. If you're not out talking to people, then you really are just running the campaign on your own. If you're getting the feedback from people and you're getting you're getting a door slammed in your face once in a while, you're getting people who don't agree with you, but well, because you're there, they're thinking about it. Um, Occasionally, you're even having to talk over top of barking dogs with a cracked door, which is like just trying to hear over the dog, and it, you know, it works. But that's one of the things that makes a good candidate. You have to be out there, you have to be doing that work, whether it's cold, whether it's you just don't feel like it, but after you get a couple doors under your belt, it's going okay. It's a hard work department. Um, to do that hard work in the campaign, and then to continue to do that hard work once you're elected. 
I've spent it since 1988 in this county. Spent a bit up in Sycamore, and uh, ended up after the divorce moving myself down here with some cheaper to live. And consequent with divorce, you know, I get once a while get my daughter back here periodically from where her mother was with her in California. And so I've done a bit of, you know, raising my daughter. She spent a couple years at Cal I think. Spent a bit of time up in Sycamore early on. Yeah, get invested. I came here in 88 for school and I really just didn't think, was I going to stay that long? Well, there you go. It's been a while now and I'm still here. And I guess it's sort of growing me and well, I want to try to make things better. And want to make sure we continue to do the good things we're doing and not go too far one way or the other and cause our county more problems than we need to have. Thank you. Thank you, Jim Rickey. Uh, Craig Gentleman, uh, what makes you the best candidate for this office? Well, I'd like to start off with uh, <clears throat> Mr. Lucky brought up a good point about going out and meeting people door knocking. But I think the key is when you talk to those people, you need to listen to your constituents and really hear what they're saying. And I think that's what's failing to happen in this county currently. Uh, it's important to remember that I'm not a politician, and yes, I've never run for office before. But it's not important because we have a county board that's comprised of many, not all. People that are simply out of touch and concerns with the concerns of the people in the county. It is, we need to start looking at efficient and cost effective ways to start to turn this county around. We have an aging population, uh, the housing market is not doing well, the price of houses have gone down, everyone's feeling that. Taxes keep getting raised, and what is currently happening in the board is not solving any of the issues. People care about money and they care about jobs. And we need to bring real job opportunities back to this county. And that's only going to start when we start really going through and analyzing the administrative apparatus, checking out those duplicate programs, and really finding out where the money is going. Really finding out. And after that, we need to remain transparent so that constituents understand what is really going on in the county board. We also need to work on eliminating some of the regulations. And that way we'll be able to keep the money in the walls of the constituents and away from the bureaucracy that isn't using it currently. Thank you, Craig Gentleman. Uh, I'd like to ask you another question, if I might. Uh, how effective do you feel that the DeKalb County Board has been during the past two years, and what areas can it improve upon? Well, I'd like to be fair, I want to reemphasize that there are county board members doing the right thing. And we need more of those individuals, many more. But I'm really concerned about the fiscal situation in the county. We, one thing that I will not fall into is I'm not going to toe the party line. I'm an individual thinker. I'm not going to fall for her to think. I'm going to make prudent, transparent decisions for the county. I'm going to sit there and listen to both sides and hopefully make the best choices for all the constituents. We need to also make sure we're analyzing all the committees and what is really going on and make sure we have financially and fiscal plausible policies that are going through for the county. We have to stop. I understand and I agree with Jim about not going too far to the right, too far to the left. That's important because we need to stay away from personal ideology and also giving money to close friends and businesses of county board members. The people of the District of 9 of county board want an independent representative, one who's concerned about enhancing the livelihood of the people of the district and not just simply occupying a seat with title and influence. Thank you, Craig Jenner. Uh, now on to you, Jim Lilly. Uh, how effective do you feel the DeKalb County Board has been during the past two years, and what areas can be improved upon? I run many races on a slogan. It's on my link again this time, open, effective, and accountable government. I guess I believe that is one thing that really strikes to the heart of why I'm a Democrat. If government isn't open, all sorts of things can happen. Yes, there can be there can be contracts that end up going to friends and board members, possibly. 
That may have happened in the past, I'm sure, many years ago when things were a little less open. Effective and accountable, both of those are all around to what actually has happened. How is our county board doing? I guess it's a matter of you judge it by its results. Our county right now, if I'm not mistaken, the Chronicle just had an article about unemployment decreasing. There is only, I imagine, so much a county board can do about national trends in employment. I know unemployment nationally has been slowly, slowly crawling back up. It can do certain things. They are working on an enterprise zone. I know that. I would advocate for that. Um, that is one way to bring things back to life, to get more jobs in. The other, I mean, well, enterprise zones, you got to be careful because you can have tax abatements that tend to mess with our property tax system even more than it already has been messed with. You don't, you won't, they have to be judiciously used. But uh, I have it from, I think it was the chair of the finance committee. He mentioned as far as the judgment of how is the county's fiscal health. We have a contingency fund. We have that, uh, that fund we've been drawing, reserve fund. There we go. Lots of other units government don't have it. Yes, we're drawing off it. It's scheduled to go down, as finance people say. They're budgeting that down lower and lower. But we have it. Lots of other governments have it. Yeah, that's a good judge. Th thank you, Jim. <laughs> Last question, and we'll start with you again, uh, Jim Lipke. Uh, with the expansion of the Cal County Landfill and citizens notice, noticing an increased odor in the air, what will you do as a Cal County Board member to keep our air safe? The land. It keeps coming back, like that odor in it. How about that? Okay. As far as the landfill, yep, I guess it's here to stay. We know that. We went through the courts. Ain't moving. However, um, I would have to agree with Mr. Uh, Cole, uh, Mr. Porterfield who came before us. The EPA, state, and wherever the federal fits in, they have the regulations, which is exactly what they're meant to do. They're meant to protect us from bad air quality, making sure that the waste management lives up to that, work with waste management, um, make sure that they're doing everything they should be doing. I'm sure there will come a time one day when waste management will look at that landfill and say, hey, we've got some new technology, we've got something different we want to do with this, so who knows, 20, 25 years down the way, that problem may change in some way, you know? Who knows, maybe they'll decide methane generation, that site's worthwhile. But at this moment, we've got it. We work within the regulations we've got. I mean, there's a good point to regulations to keep us safe. If we didn't have the regulations, we might have a landfill like we used to have, where it was not safe, where there wasn't proper barriers in there. At least with waste management buying it, they took care of that part. They're redoing that part of the landfill. They're putting in the proper barriers. They're making it up to those regulations that are apparently seem to be so onerous to some people. There's a point to regulation. No, you don't need too much. Senator Proxmire, there might be some of the age in here, remember him and his Golden Fleece Awards for things that were a little ridiculous. He's long gone, I think, but he didn't do that on a routine basis and lots of work that was done is worthwhile and lots of regulations done is still worthwhile. So that's what's there for. Keep us safe, keep our air safe, county work with waste management, make sure we do. Thank you. Thank you, Jim Lippie. Uh, now on to you, Craig Jemmen. Uh, with the expansion of the Cal County landfill and citizens noticing an increased odor in the air, what will you do as a county board member to keep our air safe? Well, I'd like to start off, uh, I've walked the district many times, knocking doors, meeting with folks in my district, and even outside of it. And of course, uh, Mr. Lippie said the questions come up many times. And uh, no doubt that we all want clean air and an odor in the area is never desirable, especially in a neighborhood you reside. I have to admit that I do not have all the answers and I'm not an expert on this subject. 
However, one thing I will contact the landfill and other environmental agencies, so everyone now will take initiative to start solving these issues. <coughs> we have to make sure that we're holding these agencies accountable and also protecting individuals and the constituents of the county. It's going to take bringing all sides together, and I would be happy to have any other county board members, Republican or Democrat, who are in the more affected areas to join me and help resolve this matter properly. Thank you, Craig Gentman. Uh, I guess we can stick with you if you'd like to deliver a one-minute closing statement. Sure. I just want to say thank you to all of you taking time coming out of your busy schedule. There's no doubt that my opponent and I have clear and different ideas on how to best execute the county seat. But I encourage you all, first and foremost, to make sure you vote on November 4th. And also keep in mind who is actually going to keep the county board accountable for all their fiscal responsibilities. We cannot keep spending the way we are and expect to turn things around. It's not going to fix the problems. We need to keep track of where all the money's going and all the constituents need to know where it's, what is happening. I challenge you to vote right. I will fight to be a fresh independent voice on the, on the county board. I will make sure that the fiscal house stays in order and reduce the amount of regulations in this county. I am looking to try to make sure that my daughter and the rest of the constituents in my county or in my district in county board, District 9, prosper the same way that I did. I thank you for your time, and I would appreciate your vote. Thank you, Craig Jenton. Uh, Jim Lipke, you have the final word. Um, like Mr. Gentleman, I would also like to thank the Chamber of Egyptian and the Chronicle, and especially WLBK, for helping get the word out to all the people who are taking a little time tonight to be better informed voters. I believe I have the judgment and experience the people of this district need an next representative the county board. Parenthood taught me something I think many listening tonight can identify with. The easy answer isn't always the correct one. That lesson applies to those who ask for your vote as well. It's easy to say you're in favor of lower property taxes, but the hard part comes in asking what you will cut to lower them. Our county government accounts for only 10% of the average property tax bill. What exactly is that sacrifice worth? Is a couple percentage point drop in taxes worth increased risk of accidents on county roads this winter? Is it worth making our county's veterans less able to find transportation to VA medical centers for their health care? Is it worth lowering the standard of care in our county's nursing home? Easy answers are nice, but governing is hard work. On November 4th, vote for me, Jim Lipke for County Board.